everyone. It's Ashley at the Silver Bay Public Library, and I am back once again with a story time for you guys to enjoy. I want to apologize for not having a video up on Wednesday. We had some technical difficulties, and our our video just went poof. We don't know what happened. But we have another set of stories for you today, as you can see, that all have to do with France. Um, I don't know. You guys probably don't know this about me, but I speak French, and now these aren't all in French, but I thought they'd be fun. And my father's family, some of them, come from France, and since our family, or France and French Canada and that kind of thing, and since our theme for this week is ancestry, I thought I'd share these as a fun little ode to my own family. But you guys probably don't care that much about that, so let us jump right into the stories for today. Our first set of stories are the Madeleine stories. Madeleine by Ludwig Bemelmans. Bimmel, I'm not sure how you say his last name. Sorry. But these are a very popular series of books, and I have a few of them for us today. But Madeleine is our first story. In an old house in Paris that was covered with vines lived twelve little girls in two straight lines. In two straight lines, they broke their bread and brushed their teeth, then went to bed. They smiled at the good and frowned at the bad. And sometimes they were very sad. They left the house at half past nine in two straight lines, in rain or shine. The smallest one was Madeline. She was not afraid of mice. She loved winter, snow, and ice. To the tiger in the zoo, Madeline just said, Pooh Pooh. And nobody knew so well how to frighten Miss Clavel. In the middle of the night, Miss Clavel turned on her light and said, Something is not right. Little Madeline sat in bed, cried and cried. Her eyes were red. And soon after, Dr. Con came, he rushed out to the phone and he dialed oh sorry apparently this book is all uh, wrinkled and he dialed D-A-N phone Danton 10-6 nurse he said it's an appendix everyone had to cry not a single eye was dry Madeline was in his arm in a blanket safe and warm in a car with a red light, they drove out into the night. Madeleine woke up two hours later in a room with flowers. Madeleine soon ate and drank. On her bed there was a crank, and a crack on the ceiling had the habit of sometimes looking like a rabbit. Outside were birds, trees, and sky, and so ten days passed quickly by. One nice morning, Miss Clavel said, Isn't this a fine day to visit? Madeline. Visitors from two to four read a sign outside her door, tiptoeing with solemn face with some flowers in a vase. In they walked and then said, ah, when they saw the toys and candy in the dollhouse from Papa. But the biggest surprise by far on her stomach was a scar. Goodbye, they said, we'll come again. And the little girls left in the rain brushed their teeth, or they went home and broke their bread, brushed their teeth, and went to bed. In the middle of the night, Miss Clavel turned, off the li turned on the light and said, something is not right. And afraid of disaster, Miss Clavel ran faster and faster. And she said, please children, do tell me what is troubling you. And all the little girls cried, boo-hoo, we want to have our appendix out too. Good night, little girls. Thank the Lord you are well. And now go to sleep, said Miss Clavel. And she turned out the light, and she closed the door, and that's all there is. There isn't any more. And that was the first book about Madeline. How cute. And 
this one is Madeleine Says Merci, The Always Be Polite Book by John Bellamins Marciano. There's a fun sun in the cover. How cute. But let us dive right in. Ah. This one is based on the characters created by Ludwig Bellamins. So the writer isn't the same as the book we just read, but the characters are going to be very similar. So. In an old house in Paris, Paris that was covered with vines, lived twelve little girls in two straight lines. Day in, day out, they got along fine. They'd hardly ever shout or whine. To each other they were polite, except for the occasional pillow fight. The pages that follow offer advice on how to be polite and nice. As you read, please keep in mind, it all comes down to being kind. Don't forget to think of others, parents, pets, and little brothers. Hello. Bonjour, as they say in France. The proper way to greet someone you chance to meet is to look them in the eye and say hello or even smile. The hello that's most the hello that's most worthwhile is the one delivered with a smile. Sorry, if I remember correctly. When a grown up is introduced to you, look up and say, How do you do? If they extend their hand to take off to take, offer back a nice firm handshake. Uh how do you do? Could also be comment ça va? in French. But when you meet the queen for tea, the proper thing to do is curtsy. To greet a dog, un chien, you kneel down low and give a gentle pat, hello. When meeting a group, don't just say hey, say hello to each and to all the same way. But when the most you can do is wave your hand, the other person will understand. Please, s'il vous plaît. And thank you. Merci. To ask for something, what do you say? Please, or in Paris, s'il vous plaît, as I said. When it's your turn to pass the plate, smile, be generous, don't hesitate. Now that you have what you desired, the words thank you are what's required. You're welcome is the thing to say. After thanks have come your way. Every gift deserves appreciation no matter what the situation if it's something you asked for a surprise from the store unwanted gifts you find a bore what you've had seven of before a thank you token is a very nice token a thank you spoken is a very nice token but a thank you letter is even better because getting a thank you in the mail will brighten your day without fail kindness and consideration if someone wants to talk to you, listen to, t listen to them until they're through. No matter if they talk till dawn, don't interrupt, look bored, or yawn. Hold your words and don't be vexed. Your turn to speak is coming next. Interrupt only if you see a prisoner running free, a porcupine who wants to play, a solar eclipse, look away, a bucking, snorting runaway horse, or a house on fire, of course. Don't be selfish and given to greed. Here, I have more than I need. It can be a lot of fun to share, and taking turns is always fair. You can see the cat here. That's un uh, chat. Un chat, un chien. Un chien et un chat. An animal is a friend, not a toy. This sort of thing, it does not enjoy. Sometimes she wants to be left alone to sleep or chew her favorite bone. If you let her have her way, she'll come to you when she wants to play. No one minds a little help. Start by cleaning up after yourself. Do the dishes, sweep the floor, take out the garbage, hold the door. Sorry. Désolé. Accidents happen without intent or warning. Madeline spilled her juice this morning. Excuse me, please. I beg your pardon, and after that, it was forgotten. If you do something you know is wrong, such as going where you don't belong, don't make it worse by telling lies. Say you're sorry and apologize. Teasing someone isn't cool, and it's never funny, often cruel. To remedy this ugly business, try and beg for some forgiveness. If you do what you should dare and give your teacher quite a scare, apologize to her and never do that thing again. Excuse me, sorry, pardon me, does not mean that you are free to push or shove obnoxiously. Being sorry's most important part is that it comes straight from the heart. 
Good night. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Bonne nuit. Bonsoir. Goodbye. Let others know that you are sad to see them go. Now it's time to go to bed. There's nothing more that needs to be said. Except the words, sleep well, good night. Which let you know that all is right. So, Miss Clavel, please turn out the light on this book of how to be polite. Fini. Finished. And that's how to be polite. Our last book about Madeleine is Madeleine and the Cats of Rome, also by John Bellens Marciano. house in Petit, Paris that was covered with vines, t left twelve little girls in two straight lines. Their bags were packed, a camera stowed, they were ready to escape the cold. The train had left at half past nine, hurry, hurry, Madeleine. Across the Alps the pace was slow, the mountains still were packed with snow. But the far and farther south they traveled, the more that winter came unraveled. Although it's dreary back at home, the time has come for... Spring in Rome. Down the steps, they took a stroll. Oh, what else did they do? They took a stroll, hearing bells of churches toll. Here in the fountain, they found quite appealing. And everyone loved the Sistine ceiling. But in Italy, the greatest treat comes when it is time to eat. Miss Clavel said, over here, Signor, twelve plates of pasta, por favor, per favor. The hours of the day were running out. The sun was setting, or just about. One last photo, let's press in tight, said Miss Clavel. Yes, that's right. But the moment she had her camera drawn... It was yanked from her hand by the strap, and was gone. Madeleine took up the chase. First a theft, and now a race. Into the fountain with a splash through the market with a in a dash. Across the river they kept the tail, but coming back, they lost the trail. Madeleine said there is no justice, that little thief completely lost us. Just then a cat, seeking some affection, arched its back in Madeleine's direction. Madeleine said, my, what a nice kitten. Her dog was of a different opinion. Genevieve, Madeleine yelled. Too late, she had followed the cat through a locked up grate into a house about to fall down, found in the poorest part of town. Madeleine pushed the door, it creaked. Is anyone there? she asked as she peeked. From somewhere deep in the shadowy dark, she heard Genevieve's whimpering bark. Then Madeleine saw, to her great surprise, those shining, staring, glaring... Hmm, these pages. Those shining, staring, glaring eyes. They were cats. Cats, look at all of them. There were cats on the sofa, cats in the hall, cats coming out of a hole in the wall. A voice behind her, clear and set, strong, said, You have come where you do not belong. Madeleine turned in disbelief to see that it was the camera thief. Yes, tis I, the thief Caterina, protector of the colonia Felina. We are the orphans of the street, these cats and I, so that we may eat is the reason why I steal from your tur you tourist passerby. While I applaud your charity, let me say this with clarity. Stealing is wrong, no matter the cause. You may not like it, but those are the laws, according to Madeleine. It is easy for you to judge and to scold. For what do you know of hunger and cold? Here is your camera. Now don't be slow. Just take your well-groomed mutt and go. The two of them left in a hurry. But now they had a different worry. What was the name of their hotel? How would they find dear Miss Clavel? Little girl, would it be a bother to photograph me with my father? But the picture Madeleine took was the portrait of a crook. Hey, Madeleine, thanks for the assistance, Katrina said, running into the distance. The victims were stunned, then both of them hollered, but lo and behold, the thief got collared. Gotcha, said the cops as he seized her. And don't forget her accomplice, either. Miss Clavel was at the court to file a missing persons report. That's the second case I've heard of today, of children who have gone astray. Their daughter, too, has disappeared. I'm sad to say the worst is feared. In came two criminals, walking slow, their noises sniffling, their heads hung low. 
What a shameful sign of the time, still so young and turned to crime. Madeline, the girls rejoiced, with hugs and cheers and eyes all moist. Katharina, the parents cried. When you missed your dinner, we thought you died. Dinner? A home? A family? said Madeline. You lied to me. I just wanted to help the cats somehow, Katharina said. What will happen to them now? What's this about some cats I hear, said Papa. How many do you have, my dear? She'd only made it to eleven when her mama cried, good heaven. All these cats, what shall we do? Not a person had a clue until Madeline had the inspiration for how to solve the situation. First, a complete evacuation. Then, a rescue operation. Cats to adopt. And then it says it there in um, Italian, but I can't read that. And then, Sha a adopte. An orange tabby was bound for Brazil, a calico for Notting Hill. Two more would be meowing Russian. Off to Stockholm went their cousins. Cacio Pepe, a spotted kitty, would make his way to New York City. Another, missing half his tail, was flying home to Israel. One last cat would be going home to a beautiful house right here in Rome. My parents are letting me keep this one. Thanks, Madeline, for all you have done. Her cat let out a happy meow. And now, dear reader, we bid you ciao. Which means bye. And now is the story of Madeline and the cats of Rome. That is all that we have for Madeleine's story, but we do have some more French-inspired stories about these. this little guy. This is Gaston. Gaston is a fun French name. Maybe if you've heard, if you've seen the movie um, Beauty and the Beast, you'll know that the villain's name is Gaston in that movie. But this one's just a cute little pupper, so he cannot do any harm. But this is called Gaston, words by Kelly DiPuccio and pictures by Christian Robinson. Miss Poodle admired her new puppies, Fifi, Fufu, Olala, and Gaston. And Gaston. Would you like to see them again? Fifi, Fufu, Olala, and Gaston. Perfectly precious, aren't they? Miss Poodle thought so too. The puppies grew as puppies do. Three were no bigger than teacups. The fourth, however, continued to grow and grow until he was the size of a teapot. Miss Poodle took pride in teaching her puppies how to be proper pooches. They were taught to sip, never slobber. Good, well done. Very nice. Nice try. They were taught to yip, never yap. Yip, yip, yip. Ruff! Went Gaston. And they were taught to walk with grace, never race. Tiptoe. Tippy toe. Whoa, was Gaston. The puppies were also taught how to look pretty in pink, nibble their kibble, and ride in style. Whatever the lesson, Gaston always worked the hardest, practiced the longest, and smiled the biggest. Miss Poodle was very pleased with all her puppies Fifi, Fufu, Olala, and Gaston. Spring arrived, and the proud mother was eager to show off her darlings. She took them to the park for their very first stroll in public. There was much to see. Daffodils, ducklings, dogs. Oh dear, what do we have here? Rocky, Ricky, Bruno, and Antoinette. Would you like to see them again? Rocky, Ricky, Bruno, and Antoinette. This was more than a little awkward. The mothers sized up the pups, the pups sized up one another. It seems there's been a terrible mistake, Miss Bulldog said, breaking the silence. Wee oui, wee, oui, Miss Poodle agreed sadly. Whatever shall we do? Miss Bulldog could not come up with an answer. I guess we'll let them decide, she replied at last. Because Gaston was a bulldog and Antoinette was a poodle, but they were with different families. It was a mix up. Gaston and Antoinette were young, but even they could see that there had been a mix-up. The two puppies began to circle around and around the group. Gaston walked with grace, Antoinette raced. Gaston yipped, Antoinette yapped. And when they finally came to a stop, the puppies had traded places. There, that looked right. It just didn't feel right. That evening, Antoinette tried to fit in with her new sisters, but she could but she did not like anything proper or precious or pink. 
Philly. On the other side of town, Gaston tried to fit in with his new brothers, but he did not like anything brutish or brawny or brown. Ugh. Antoinette and Gaston weren't the only ones who were having a hard time adjusting. Next morning, Miss Poodle forgot all about being proper and raced back to the park. Miss Bulldog was already there, waiting with her burly brood. It seems we've made terrible mistakes, she nearly shouted. We, oui, we, oui, Miss Poodle agreed happily. This time, Gaston and Antoinette wasted no time trading places. There. That looked right, and it felt right, too. From that day forward, the family spent in the park every afternoon to play. Rocky, Ricky, Bruno, and Antoinette taught the poodle puppies a thing or two about being tough. Likewise, Fifi, Fufu, Olala, and Gaston taught the bulldog puppies a thing or two about being tender. And many years later, when Gaston and Antoinette fell in love and had puppies of their own, they taught them to be whatever they wanted to be. And that's the cute story of Gaston. But if you noticed, Antoinette was also in the story. So now that we have Antoinette and Gaston, there's one more story for you guys. Let's see if I can get these cute little fellas set up on my lap. I have Antoinette by Kelly DiPuccio and Christian Robinson, the same people who wrote the last book. But let us read the story of Antoinette this time. Miss Bulldog watched her puppies race through the yard. Rocky, Ricky, Bruno, and Antoinette. Here they come again. Rocky, Ricky, Bruno, and Antoinette. Busy, aren't they? And ridiculously cute, but please don't tell them that. <laughs> Fooey, says Antoinette. Miss Bulldog knew, as mothers do, that each of her puppies was special. Rocky was clever, outstanding. Ricky was fast, superb. Bruno was strong, impressive. And Antoinette. Well, unlike her burly brothers, she still hadn't quite discovered what she was good at. Chin up, barked her mother. You have something extra special. I can feel it in my bones. Antoinette was not so sure. Every day the family went to the park to play with their doggy friends. Fifi, Fufu, Olala, and Gaston. Antoinette was fond of Fifi, Fufu, Olala, and especially Gaston. There was much to chase after in the park. Biscuits, balls, butterflies. Oh boy, there seems to be a problem. Yip, yip, yip. A puppy is missing, Miss Bulldog announced. The pups gathered around. Ricky, Rocky, Ricky, Bruno, and Antoinette, followed by Fifi, Fufu, and Gaston. Where is Olala? Miss Poodle asked frantically. Miss Bulldog comforted her friend. We will find her, she insisted. Rocky was clever, and he tracked paw prints in the mud. No, oh la la. Ricky was fast, and he raced around the lake in no time at all. No, oh la la. Bruno was strong, and he left no stone unturned. Still, no, oh la la. Miss Poodle cried out in desperation. Whatever shall we do? In that moment, Antoinette felt a tug in her heart and a twitch in her nose. She could not, would not give up. Antoinette sniffed sidewalks and street vendors and signposts. The fearless pup dodged buggies and bicycles and broomsticks. Not even a loud, hungry garbage truck could slow her down. And while this might not mean anything to you guys, in the background, you can see there's a chocolatier. Chocolatier. Uh, that's not how you pronounce it. I'm sorry. It's a uh, chocolate place where you can just get a bunch of fun sweets. There's a boulangerie, uh, which is for bread, and then just some French uh, numbers and whatnot. When the parade of dogs approached the entrance to the city's museum, Antoinette began to lap, yap loudly. Yep, 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 yep. No dogs allowed, the guard said gruffly, pointing to the sign. Do you guys have any idea what this museum would be in Paris? It's called the Louvre. A lot of very famous paintings are there, and it's in the shape of a big pyramid. But, continuing the story, Antoinette was unstoppable. 
She ran circles around the guard, dashed through the door, then raced down a long corridor. Antoinette burst through the crowd just in time. Yep, yep, yep. To save Olala from a perilous fall. Très bien. Very good. Olala was on top of a statue trying to get a butterfly. Would you like to see that again? Antoinette racing up and grabbing the tail of Olala before she fell off the statue. Well done, Antoinette. Merci, merci, Miss Poodle said, ha panting happily. You found my Olala. Miss Bulldog was beaming with pride. You were remarkably brave, she said to her daughter with a wink. Antoinette smiled. Gaston smiled, too. Ten many years later, as we know, while Antoinette and Gaston were raising a busy family of their own, Antoinette followed her heart and her nose, and became one of the most famous police dogs ever to patrol the streets of Paris. Oh, we did not know that. How impressive of Antoinette to become a police dog. Well, that's just wonderful. I hope you guys enjoyed our story today and the fuzzy little friends that joined us. These little fuzzy friends also are... Here's a bit of a, a peek into what we're going to have for next week's stories. Next week for the summer reading program, we're doing puppets. So if you come to the library and you can get a packet, and we're going to be making some fun puppet pals. So I'll be reading a lot of stories about fun little animals, as puppets are often animals. So these little ones, thank you so much for listening, as do I. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much, and bye bye